Okay, 10.6, we're dealing with secants, tangents, and angle measures. So kind of a little bit of everything thrown into this whole section here. Um, not the best picture, but I just couldn't resist it. Um, there, there, there's a bridge, here's a support beam for the bridge, and here's a bridge like with a road on it, and there's a road on it over here. So one of these things is a secant. So this sure looks like the tangent, doesn't it? So that leaves this to be a secant. And it's called, I don't know, the Lewis Bridge in Portugal. There's an upper road and a lower road. The lower road intersects the circle support arc in two places. This is called a secant of a circle. Kind of gives you a nice feeling of it. Um, yeah. So there's a, a drawing of a secant um, of a circle, basically. Notice how it doesn't touch. It cuts through two places. And actually, isn't a chord just one segment? one portion of your line, of your secant line. So there's your secant, folks, right here. This is a secant line. Okay, what do we need to know about that? If two secants intersect the interior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is one half the sum of the measure of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. Okay, so basically angle one <coughs> is one half, okay, is one half this arc plus this arc. That's just crazy, isn't it? Okay, let's go the other way. This is angle two right here. It's equal to one half this arc plus this arc. All right, let's put it into practice. All right, we want to find measure angle four and find arc EH. Let's start by actually just finding measure of angle three. Okay, something we could deal with pretty easily. So we're going to take the measure of angle 3 is going to equal 1 half of this arc. See how it's formed by these two secants? So it's 1 half of 76 plus this arc right here, 88. Okay, so angle 3 is equal to 1 half of 150, 164, I believe that ends up being. Okay, and one half of 164 is going to be 82, all right? So angle 3 is 82 degrees. Just because we want to make sure we're clear on this, this will also be 82 <coughs> degrees. And if you figure it out, once you take this arc plus this arc and divide it by 2, yeah. All right, now here's the sneaky thing you can do. We don't have to refigure. Oh, let's take this arc and figure out what this arc is divide by 2. We already know this is a straight line. <coughs> so if that's a straight line, then we have 180 degrees, and you can just take 180 minus 182, and doesn't that make you 98 degrees? Yeah, it does. So angle 4 is 98 degrees. Example 2, find the measure of angle 5, okay? They give us arc AC <coughs> is 63. XY is 21. <coughs> Let me see if I can take care of some of the coughing. All right. Now, we're not going to be able to find 5 right away. What I would do is find 6. Find angle 6, and then we'll use that to help us figure out angle 5. <coughs> Okay, so angle 6, 1 half, 63 plus 21. Half of 84 is 42 degrees. So now you're going to take 180 minus 42, and I believe that's going to be 138. Yeah, that's all there is to it. New rule. I know, he's getting a little can be a little overbearing. If a secant and a tangent intersect at the point of tangency, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of its intersected arc. So here's angle ABC, right here. There's the angle. You're going to take one half of this arc. If you want to figure out what angle DBC is, then you're going to take one half of this arc right here. Here we go. 
backwards, actually is what they're giving you. This is your arc right here. I guess it's not backwards, but 114 plus 136. Isn't that 250? So if this is 250 degrees, this angle right here is half that, which is 125. And they want us to find angle RPS. Well, if this is 125, angle 1 P, RPS is 180 minus 125. I believe that gives you 55 degrees. Angle FEG. FEG is what we need to find. So this angle right here. HF is 80. We've got that marked in there. HE is 164. Let's figure out what the total is. So 80 plus 164 is 244 degrees. So this angle right here, which corresponds to that arc, is going to be half of that. So you're going to have 122 degrees. Okay, the question is to find FEG though. So if we have 122, we've got a straight line. I've already used up 122 of those degrees. I believe we have 58 degrees left. So angle FEG is 58 degrees. Okay. Okay, I'm not even gonna read out all the words there. Okay, if, you, if you're gonna write down things, please write down a picture and this little statement down here. Here's what I say, because to me it applies to all of them. And maybe this doesn't work for you, but this is my helpful hint. Large arc, or one half large arc minus small arc. One half large arc minus small arc. And one half is the large arc minus the small arc. And every time that gives us this angle down here. This angle, this angle. Okay, let's try it. We're gonna find X. Large arc minus the small arc. One half of that, I forgot to say one half. One half times a large arc minus a small arc gives us that angle. So angle, I'm going to put angle 62 degrees, that's a little weird. Is one half the large arc, which is 141, minus x. Okay, so 62 equals, now I'm going to, normally, and maybe I'll go through it both ways. I know, some of you may be rolling your eyes, but let's go ahead and do that. You can take one half times 144, is, uh oh, I wanted to erase, not highlight. So one half times 144, you're distributing, would be 70.5, right? And then minus one half x. Okay, now we solve for x. So you're gonna subtract 70.5 for both sides. That gives me negative 8.5 equals negative one half x. Multiply both sides by two actually negative 2, and I'm going to get 17, okay? And you can check. Is 141 minus 17, take that number, divide it by 2, and that gives me 62. Now here's my way. If I show you on the board something in class, I will probably do this. I'm not going to mess with distributive property, fractions, and decimals, and all that. I'm going to right away multiply by 2. What that does is one half times two cancels out. And I know I have kids who always want to do that. Uh, it cancels out with the one half. When I do the one side equation, I must do the other. So I have to take this side times 62. So now I get 134. Or is that 124? I believe that's 124. Equals 141 minus x. So now I've got... 124, I'm going to subtract 141, and now I have x equals 17. Okay, it doesn't seem maybe all that much better for a lot of you, um, and you really do have to understand how to do this in order for it to make sense. So you have two options. This is the one you're going to see me do in class. All right, let's keep moving on. Kind of similar thing here. Let's try it another time. This must be important. We really have to find big x here. Large arc minus the small arc. Once again, we take half of that. So 38 degrees is equal to one half the large arc minus the small arc. Okay, large arc, small arc. Now what I'm going to do is take both sides times two. So that's how I'm showing this one. You can go ahead and do it your other way, distributive property if you need to. 
So if I take this side times 2, this part will be gone. I'll have 76 equals x minus 35. Now I'm going to add 35 to both sides. And um, 76 plus 35 is like 111. And we can double check our work. Take 111 minus 35 and then divide it by 2. And by golly, I get 38. So we're happy, happy, happy. Okay, this looks impossible. It looks like there's not enough information. A jeweler wants to craft a pendant with the shape shown. Use the finger to determine the measure of the arc at the bottom of the pendant. This is a big idea. I have no idea how much this is. I'm calling it X. But I have no idea what this is. I'm going to call that 360 degrees minus X. Huh, now it's not so impossible, is it? So I take 40 is equal to 1 half the large arc, which is X, minus, be careful here, I have to minus the small arc. I have to minus the entire value, 360 minus X. Yeah, there's a little bit of math involved. We have to use what we know from our late elementary middle school math here. One half, now I'm gonna distribute negative one times everything in the parentheses, or I just, in my mind, I always think switch the signs, okay? I'm gonna condense what is in the parentheses, so I have x plus x, which gives me two x. I'm still gonna do my take both sides times one half, or excuse me, take both sides times two, so if I take this times 2, I end up with the 1 half disappearing. But I have to take the other side times 2, so I get 80. I don't even need the parentheses there. Add 360 to both sides. 440 is equal to 2x. So x is equal to 220. Let's check. That would make this piece 220. 360 minus 220 is 140. So is it true that 1 half times 220 minus 140, that's 80, that gives me 40. Is that what this is? Yes, it is. All right. Same kind of problem, but everything's a little different in this one. Two sides of a fence are to be built around a circular garden in a park or shown. Use a figure to determine the measure of angle A. So I need to figure out this. I'm going to get you started. This part, oops, around the circle, isn't that 360 minus x? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Too much on my brain is on the other problem yet. 360 minus 105. Isn't that what's left? There's 360. 105 has been used up. I want you to finish example number eight. Example nine. Let's go through this one. You got algebra and the geometry stuff all in one problem. Large arc, excuse me, one half times the large arc minus the small arc. So 37 is equal to one half the large arc minus, be careful, I have to minus this entire expression. What that means is now I'm going to be doing my work here. I've got 20x minus 26, switch my signs or multiply by negative 1, distribute a property, minus 8. I'm going to condense what's in the parentheses. So I have 12x and I have minus 34. Multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that 1 half. I'm going to add 34 to both sides now, so that gives me, I think, 108 is equal to 12x. Divide 108 by 12, I get x is equal to 9. All right, and what does it say to do? It says find the value of x, which I just did. And once again, you can put it back in there and test to see if you're right. Which if that were a test question, I think you, if you had time, go ahead, oops, go ahead and figure out what that is. All right. Happy, happy lesson.